This Bonfire Side Chat Appendix is brought to you by LatchkeyKingdom.com. It is a webcomic by Nick Daniel. Mm -hmm. And it features the adventures of Willa Dragonfly, who is a young adventurer who explores uh, worlds kind of inspired by... um, like child like adventure logic and video games in a way that is not explicitly like you know lol inventory management is hard (laughs) oh touch these spikes you die it is much more um kind of evoking the feel of being into video games and being young as opposed to uh the you know kind of uh you know jokes that are going to age really poorly (laughs) like your uh you know any other webcomic like like, like your controls all delete yeah, like like yeah, or your penny arcades. Like or, it is not like that kind of webcomic. Or your arcades penny. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It is not like that. No. Um, it is much uh, much more charming, and it has its heart in the right place. And we both really like it. You know what? Yeah. Beautiful art. Excellent yeah, colorist, absolutely. that Nick Daniel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it is gorgeous. And uh, we you know we recommend starting at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, it has uh, the first arc deals with these tiny little rats, much like in this episode we're going to talk about tiny little rats. Mm-hmm. And uh, he also, as you have probably noticed, we have brand new cover art for our podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nick is responsible for that. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Huge thanks to Nick. And also, if you would like to uh, check it out, it is latchkeykingdom.com. In fact, not if you would like to. Do it. Yeah. There's no if or about it. <laughs> yeah. Get on it. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And I'm Dave Klein. And you're listening to Bonfire Side Chat Appendix. It is a cursed second favorite. And this week we are reading responses to The Sinner's Rise and The Grave of the Saints. Thank you for sticking around, Dave. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm I'm excited to dig into these comments. Yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Um, cool. Why don't you get us started with uh, with Matt with a little bit of follow-up from Huntsman's Cops. Yes. So Matt writes in via the contact form, which is at duckfeed.tv slash contact, saying, I have a bit of lore speculation about the curse pots after listening to the most recent episode. It seems like one of the few uses anyone, anyone would have for pots full of curse would be to spread it to new people and places. If that is what they are being used for, then I could see the one in the Huntsman's Cops being there to turn regular people undead. Perhaps that might have been an extra twist form of capital punishment where the condemned people are made undead so their suffering would go on without end rather than the whole being tortured to death that uh, pre-modern justice systems brought us in the real world uh, i'm not sure if this idea fits with the placement of any of the other curse pots but it does feel like something the old iron king would do since that guy is a bit of a dick just a little bit this is, this is a smidge <laughs> smidge a of a bit. dick yeah, I agree that he is a smidge dick. He's a dick sliver, yes. That's actually that's why he's so angry all the time. He's trying to uh, compensate. Schlong, he's got a schlittle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a schlort. <laughs> he's got a schlort. He's too short. I don't know why Mitha was possibly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, she decided snake snaked him is, yeah. is better than, than that. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense for the curse pot. It still doesn't, I still don't know why they are where they're at. Like that one in Amana really throws me for a loop. Mm-hmm. Um, but that does make sense yeah. as it being a, a torture device here. Yeah. Um, potentially. Or even just as a weapon of warfare. I mean, flinging plague bodies over the walls of oh, uh, sure. castles for siege, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that's, and, that's a cool idea. And they seem to be, you know, designed to freak people out. Like they're instruments of terror. The fact that they <laughs> laugh like that. You know? Yeah, it's, it's strange because like everyone's so afraid of the curse and trying to prevent it that and it seems like they don't know how it began and how to prevent it. Yet they might possibly have a method of inducing it. Hmm. Yeah, which is odd to me. Or they could just get rid of these pots. <laughs> yeah, like well, here's like, your we problem. Can get rid of this thing. <laughs> here's your problem. You got a bad Drop case them all of pots. The pit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got a case of pot pit. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you, Matt. Um, Zane says via contact I have found a use for the contentious tree near the second bonfire in Huntsman Cu- Huntsman's Cops PvP most phantoms spawn on the side of the wall with a ladder so you can lure them up there and onto the other side while they jump down after you you can navigate back across using the fallen tree and have an easy time sending them to their doom when they try to follow you several spells and weapons have enough reach and pushback that they'll either knock your opponent off or force them into rolling which usually doesn't end well mm-hmm. using this method i've killed five phantoms without dying usually with nothing more than a single dark orb 
And he's, uh, of course, referring to the uh, the tree shut court, uh, shut court, <laughs> uh, tree shortcut <laughs> that we <laughs> shut court. What's going on? I uh, smell toast. The, uh, the the tree shortcut that we uh, we kind of bemoaned a little bit in the last episode that seems uh, superfluous to say the least. Well, that shut court was one yeah. of the best shut courts in the game. <laughs> yeah, bud shut court. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's one of the best PPV sports in the Gorm. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of uh, Peeve Peeverson in a great video where he was using, um, I think it was Dark Orb, where he was flying around the dragon area and just using that so anyone who was on one of those hang uh, zip, lines. Think, zip lines, a zip line would just fall off as soon as they knocked into it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it reminds me of that. Just a great way to troll people. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Which mm-hmm. I'm okay with. <laughs> That's part of the game. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Um, yeah, Dave, do you want to take uh, the next one? Yeah, so Jeremy Greer writes in via contact, I wanted to point out one interesting thing about the Red Phantom guarding the entrance to the chariot fight. He's the only phantom in the game rocking a level 1 Brotherhood of Blood aura. As y'all probably know, the more kills you get, the cooler your Red Phantom aura looks. All the other NPC phantoms in the game have the standard aura, but this dude has apparently killed enough people to get up to level 1, which is really hard if you guys know (laughs) that. While I'm here, I should point out how miserable getting these auras is. Unlike the Blue Bros, every loss is counted against a win when you're trying to level up as a Blood Bro. This means that instead of just needing 500 wins to max the Covenant out, you need 500 more wins than losses. Worse, invasions and arena matches are counted separately, which I can only imagine was done specifically to make Blood Bros hate themselves. It's a small problem that's indicative of a larger problem with PvP. A lot of these systems just weren't thought out all that well. I'll save these comments for a future PvP episode, though. Yeah. Hmm. Rather, I'll save those comments for a future PvP episode. I think he was telling me to save it. No, no, he wasn't. Yeah, you save those. Save it. Save it. Yes, yes, Cram save it. it. Cram it, Ross. Um, yeah. It yeah, is insane like German. to me how hard it is to get that, that aura. And he's got a good point about that phantom. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I didn't notice it either. No. Yeah. Good good observation, Jeremy. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's kind of like... That's what we were talking about in the previous episode with... Uh, with the Grey Phantoms and the Rapros and how easy it is to get through the Rapro Covenant, it really is the Blood Brothers that I think of, where it's like, it is so hard to level up all the way in the Brotherhood of the Blood yeah. because of this. It just takes so long, and you have to be really good, too, on top of that. Because, yeah, you you win 500 times, but if you lose 250, you still need 250 more wins. Yeah, I'm not nearly good enough. Yeah. Like, I've spent some time Blood Browing, but I'm not great at PvP in this game, yeah. so the... Uh... I have not, I think ranking up in that will be forever outside my reach. Yeah. Sadly. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Womp, womp. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. Ryan writes in via contact saying, I always believed that the, uh, the artificial undead were specifically created to be hunted. It stands to reason that, with the undead curse being so pervasive, eventually the population would dwindle to the point where there just aren't enough undead to be corralled and hunted. Thus, the artificial undead are exactly that. Artificial. And were meant to give a bit more challenge to the hunters and the cops. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never considered the idea that maybe there weren't enough undead <laughs> for it, you know, to where the, the pursuit of sport actually took over. Yeah. You know, as their primary concern. And that comports with the idea of using the curse pots to uh to transform people? Hmm. Yeah. Too? I guess you only really find the artificial undead in those two places, the huntsman's cops and the Earth and Peak. Or not mm-hmm. the Earth and Peak, uh, Harvest Valley, rather. Yeah. Yeah, I think those well, are the only places. You, you find their weapons in, in uh, Elvia's keep, which is why you know we think that Elvia made them, mm-hmm. right? Um, but uh, yeah, that's those are the only two places where you actually find them. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's that's a good question though, because again, I, I don't know. I mean, because you go into the undead purgatory and there aren't any, and that really seems where like they. Well, that was more of where the torture was as opposed to the game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. maybe they yeah. did, but that <laughs> would have been. But I don't know. Then the timeline with the. Uh, with these guys, if it was Aldia who created them, that would seem to indicate that they were made after the Iron King's rule mm-hmm. and after all this undead hunt. Hunting yeah. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I, I didn't think that they were being created for the hunt. My personal thought was that they were part of, um, you know, they were there afterwards um, because, since they were created by, by Alvia. Um, but it is an interesting idea kind of regardless. Yeah. Um, Another you know. thing in support of that, they, they seem to be uh, used for labor in uh, Earth and uh, not, not Earth and Peak, the, uh, you know, Harvest, Harvest Valley. Valley. Harvest yeah. Valley. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's the idea of we're either going to hunt you or exploit you to carry rocks for us. Yeah. yeah. Even though, I mean, they never carry rocks or anything. They're just around a place where labor happens to happen. True. Yeah. 
Like, they're never actually used for it. They're just there. Mm-hmm. Um, they could also be, um, because they're also the, the kind of slave undead there. So in that one specific place in um, Harvest Valley, that little room with tons of these guys, um, they're also the, the smaller undead. So they could also be similar to, like, a, a lower form of overseer mm-hmm. other than the actual overseers. Yeah. yeah, or maybe it was just kind of placed somewhere where they didn't want, like, they created them. They're like, what do we do with these guys after all you created them? And they're like, ah, we've got a bunch of unruly undead over here, so let's just toss them there, and they'll just keep on re-killing them over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I originally thought of them as being the Huntsman, Huntsman's cops as cast-offs, or as part of a, almost an invasionary, like, a, like taking it over after, you know, yeah. after yeah. the fact. So, um, but there, it's open to many interpretations. Come on, crowns. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, then, Bring friend clarity. Of the show, Good. Yeah, friend of the show and friend of ours, Dennis Furious, says via contact. Uh, quick FYI. Cole thought the chest, chest in Huntsman's Cops Mushroom Pit was trapped because it was in the beta, mm-hmm. but it actually was not in the actual game. Other changes from the beta include the removal of Melentia from the first bonfire, the addition of the poison moths, and the swapping of two artificial undead red phantoms, one of which came to you from behind for Merciless Rowena. Yeah. And that... Yeah. Good. Well, I was going to say, actually, some of that is reintroduced in New Game Plus. Yeah. Which may be sort of a spoiler, but yeah, some of that stuff that it was actually New Game Plus stuff that was in the beta. But the trap thing, that was the that really stood out to me. Yeah. So that that, that, that that's where a lot of my confusion arose. Uh, you know, the memorable first impression of this place taking place so far ahead of everything else. Um yeah. and uh, just kind of picking and choosing what I thought was most cool. So <laughs> So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually those those um artificial undead who kind of trap you in when you're playing that was in the beta that they did that those are red phantoms um, artificial undead end up trapping you in as opposed to merciless rowena appearing and yeah that one really threw me for a loop when i was playing the beta i was like oh whoa whoa oh. <laughs> so i kind of I actually missed that one because that was so mm-hmm. such a crazy encounter although i really do like merciless rowena's warlock mask that you can get from her so i guess take the good with the bad yeah yeah she looks badass as hell yeah. All right. So F- Frederick writes in via contact. I just wanted to touch upon something that you've expressed in earlier episodes, but I feel it was somewhat overlooked in the episode regarding Huntsman's Cops. When you take the high road towards Gary's skeleton boss buddies, <laughs> a rogue undead will sprint away and lead, lead, lead you into an ambush on top of an overlook. After disposing of the rogues, to one side you will find a corpse and it contains a poison dagger. I instantly understood what had happened to this poor aspiring hero, and I knew that I would not be the first nor last person falling prey to the bandits. Small moments like these are what separates the Soul series storytelling from many other games, as it says so much with so little. I like these touches. It makes even the most minor of details paint a bigger world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about the fact that you're looting the poison knives from that guy, that you're just pulling them out of his back. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Also, Gary Skeleton Boss Buddies... (laughs) That's a good name for a gang or a band, <laughs> like a or something. It's like Jerry's kids. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like it's like Gary's kids. <laughs> Skeleton boss buddies. Yeah, collect money for it's like the Richard Dunn's. Uh, give us your bones thing from Tim and Eric. <laughs> when you yeah. walk through a star made of bones, hold your skull see... up high. Uh, <laughs> so... I want to see like a sitcom or something with the, where it's called Gary Skeleton Lords, and then it's. That show idea that you had last week where they're all like going up to some host they're hosting or like they're they're presenting a show and they're coming up from backstage and it's about their backstage life. Like, what are they really like? Oh, uh, the behind the scenes oh, documentary about yeah. the skeleton birds. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I would also like to see that show. Um, thank you, everybody, for your errata. If you have errata about the episode that we uh, just recorded, our Sinners Rise and uh, Grave of the Saints episode, mm-hmm. again, that address is duckfeed.tv forward slash contact. Uh, moving on to some responses to those areas, we have uh, Solomon. Yeah. Who would like to read Solomon? I, I will take us away. Solomon via contact writes, I had a hell of a time dealing with the water giants, being a wimpy little sword and sorcerer. Uh, my soul arrows did almost no damage and using melee meant getting up in the giant's horrific ass faces and braving huge sweeping attacks that I couldn't quite get the the dodge rhythm down for. At one point, um, I uh, was retreating back into the elevator room and I rolled backwards over the lift. Great, I thought, watching it disappear into the ceiling. I have no means of escape and now there's this big hole to fall into. As I kited the giant around the little space uh, that remained, uh, he did a tail sweep and fell into the hole, dying immediately. (laughs) 
This became my new strategy. I would pull giants and run them around the hole, baiting them into throwing themselves down the elevator shaft, sometimes managing two or three at once. Wow. Eventually, I cracked the code uh, and could take them uh, on in a more honorable fashion, uh, but I would have kept using the Bilbo Baggins method forever if, uh, if it was quick enough. And, of course, it wouldn't be Dark Souls if my victory against the giants wasn't cut short by an inexplicable exploding mummy. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> even even with a stronger build, um, those things are hard to fight, and the water doesn't help. Yeah. Um, I tend to take them up by the elevator, even if I'm not cheesing them, mm -hmm. uh, just because I can run at full speed up there. Yeah. They're, they're resistances. Uh, they, they, mm -hmm. they, they never get easier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll roll past their first attack to get to their back and then backstab them. And it usually works mm -hmm. pretty well, but it's still, they hit you once. That's a heavy hit. Yeah. This guy's hit yeah. hard. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, and, and God help you if you get far enough in to aggro one of the exploding mummies <laughs> to come and, uh, and fuck you yeah. up during the fight. Then you got both of them at you at once. <laughs> yeah. like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, yep, no, yep, no, yep. no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, David says via contact, I love the Lost Center fight. In fact, I love this fight so much that I turned around and tossed a bonfire aesthetic into the fire and did it again. Something about that Artorias one-on-one -on -one duel style where blocking will almost certainly get you killed just called to me. Two-hand your weapon, get your roll on, and duke it out. I felt betrayed by the presence of the Pyros in New Game Plus, who don't spawn a new, ga new game with an aesthetic. Uh, get the hell out of my duel. Also, the sweet, sweet lore implications. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, will, uh, yeah. that's how I did was two-handing, so I liked dodging as well. Yeah, and we'll talk yeah. more about that fight in the New Game Plus episode, uh, mostly just kind of bitching about how hard it is, because <laughs> yeah. it, it is really hard with the, that, those, those yeah. additions. They actually toned it down with one of the patches. I saw that, too, and, and that's uh, one of those things. It's interesting, the, the kind of transient nature and evolving nature of these games, where, like, no, you know, people now, like, our kids will not experience Shrine of Amana the way we did. <laughs> you know? Like, it's like, that, that's gone. It used to be you our playground. never and, know. <laughs> kids yeah. those days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to always have an unpatched version with me for my kids <laughs> and yeah. my grandkids. <laughs> Put it in a time capsule. Yeah. When I was your age, I had to trust the shrine of Amana, and they were homing the heroes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know they're still homing now, but they were really homing. They were really <laughs> homing, and I had to trust back and forth through homing yeah. soul mass on the way through and from. Grandpa, oh, we have tired. brain chips. We can plug into a into a <laughs> yeah. cyber world of pleasure. Yeah, we, Grandpa, we, get out of our singularity. We, I have we, access to the world media. We take space drugs. Yeah. <laughs> we, we live in pods of goo. Like, come on. But let me tell you about the recession of the <laughs> early 2000s. <laughs> oh, man. So Zane, via contact, writes in, regarding the water giants and sinners rise, yes, you can trick them onto the elevator, and yes, it is hilarious. I haven't been able to keep both myself and him on the elevator for the whole ride up, <laughs> but it should be possible, perhaps with Yearn. I wonder how far you can aggro him back through the level. Maybe lock him into one of those cells in the best deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a video. Make that. Get That'd in the gym. It absolutely is. Yeah. That's also commitment. That's a huge <laughs> commitment. Yeah. Well, later in um, in the Sodora, Sodora, where you have to lead that pig mm -hmm. down to the, the church, like, um, mm. you know, who knows what, what weird fucking super hidden Easter eggs there are if you lead an enemy to an entirely different area. <laughs> and you get that really useful pickaxe. Yeah. <laughs> yep yep yeah that's a lot for you it really like you guys are kingsfield guys i was thinking like when i found out it was a pickaxe i was like what what if what if it's like <laughs> yeah, ancient city open? Yeah. And it breaks now, open like this this wall now to test yeah. every single wall <laughs> <laughs> every piece of geometry it's gonna unlock something secret in the dlc mm. i just know it god i hope well, no, you don't, because then you have to, you have to farm for one of those pickaxes well, well no I, you, know, I, you don't really have to farm you can make one of the big pigs get it for you but yeah well, no, I just, I, I mean, I, I hope somebody else figures it out so I can easily replicate it and then reap the reap the reward yeah, there. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's be honest here. Yeah. You're like, I did it. <laughs> yeah. It was me. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> Look what I did, Mom. Oh. Uh, Gustavo writes in via contact saying, the Lost Center was the first old one I killed. My ship was still in Florida. He lives on a ship. Uh, when I reached oh. the entrance um, and I saw the crossbowmen and decided not to risk it. And a Dark Souls playing friend told me to go for it. Confidence surging. I decided to do the smart thing and investigate that big gaping hole in Majula. Days later, I finally decided to investigate the tower and found it full of knights. 
Uh, this particular bonfire can, can be quite deadly if you're not ready for it. Finally, I arrived to one of my favorite preambles to a boss fight in uh, in this game. The atmospheric, sunken, waterlogged, abandoned prison full of monsters gives out an aura that they don't want anyone getting to the center or to let her get out of her miserable, hellish existence. Being a bored and huge sword muscle mage um, made the fight a bit easy. Keeping my distance, casting... Uh, casting fist and swinging a literal useless piece of metal when appropriate um, and she went down on the first try on that note her mask reminds me of the stone mask Dio Brando uses in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Adventure, uh, but instead of the torturing people it is used to turn them into vampires in that particular anime as for the Grave of Saints I really don't have much to say as I played the game offline therefore making it very bare not a fan of the boss either, but I do like the Rat King as a character. Maybe once I start playing the PC version of the game, I will finally stop having the Lonely Soul experience. Can I just yeah. point something out real quick? Yeah. What would, why, why did he said at the beginning of his story that his ship was still in Florida, mm-hmm. and then he never went on to talk about where his ship ended up or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. Was that just to let us all know that he lives on a boat? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> By the way, so so you guys know I, I live on a boat and you don't. I, well, maybe uh, maybe that's why his internet is. Maybe that's why he's playing offline. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that, 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 the that makes sense. Of the sea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The, the the Aquanet. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I, Gustavo's written in before. He uh he he is not from here. Um. And uh, he from 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 all apparent uh evidence lives a very interesting life. So. I don't I, think you can live on a boat and not live an interesting life. Yeah. Like when, I said, I all appear in evidence. Yeah, when I was looking for an apartment, there was a boat that was for rent. And if it was, if I felt like I could get reliable internet, I almost went for it. Well, like I, I could just barely afford it. I'd be like one of those boat people. Yeah. Well, no, or you just it, go to Starbucks. <laughs> it, it'd, be, it'd be like living in a lighthouse. Although you're aware that living on a boat puts you like one step away from listening to Jimmy Buffett for a living, right? Yeah, it's it's a real it's a real like kind of white trash thing to do. It's like <laughs> yeah. a sea, sea billies. Well, no, but, but it's, like it's it's really tempting. I, I I have had that same inclination too. So you, you could just get up and go. Yeah. Like at any time, I just unmoor my house and then just like yeah, go west until I died. Yeah, just just like go find another I... port to solve crimes in. Yeah, exactly. It's tempting, man. Old life. That's cool. Live a life of adventure. Yeah, yeah exactly. All playing Dark Souls while you can. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Soul stuff that he was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, man, like, I actually I didn't try the board and uh, the board and swords. So I'm wondering, I think you guys mm-hmm. said you did with the Lost Center. Yeah. I did it this time around because I had the 100% block. Like, I was able to actually wield that, uh, the Drain Lake sword, or shield, rather. I think mm-hmm. that the, the way that shields work now make that strategy very, very uh, not viable, or less viable than it would have been in a previous game. Like, if you don't have a sword that can block all of the physical damage she puts out, then uh, the, it makes it very difficult. Whereas... If you're spec for it, that makes it just a little bit more viable. But you have to understand that. You know that uh, his, his what he mentioned with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's actually a great connection because in Dark Souls One, Miyazaki actually said that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure influenced him when it came to Kirk the Knight of Thorns. Hmm. Hmm. There's a character from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that influenced that design, and how there's a character with rings all over them, mm-hmm. and he thought, well, what if it was uh spikes or thorns instead of rings yeah i think that's actually in the interview that was in the art book so i i think that's a great connection you brought up yeah yeah i'm, I'm not familiar with that specific bizarre adventure <laughs> um the only bizarre adventure i'm familiar with is gustavo is bizarre ship adventure. <laughs> his, 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 his life adventure but no, i don't know that game anime. it's a fighting game too they made a fighting yeah. game out of it yeah. Yeah. Isn't, a, isn't any good like what is uh, how is it you know I haven't played it. Huh. I, I think that it is a uh, it is a berserk ask long running anime and manga series. Hmm. Yeah. Berserk ask in like content or just berserk in that it is long running. Uh, maybe maybe kind of in content, but I think it's I think it's far more bizarre than than, okay. than berserk is. Like <laughs> it is it is much more but based on. <laughs> Quite, quite like, would frank- you say JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is more bizarre? <laughs> yes, I would. It's pretty bizarre. I, I would. Know. Yeah, I, I didn't connect those two thoughts when I was saying it. But uh, okay. to, to, to be to be frank, my my knowledge of this comes entirely from what uh, from looking at weird fan art of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So my my impression of it may be skewed. So, mm. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Gustavo. And finally, uh, Zach says via contact. Um, I spent way too much time in the Grave of the Saints. And burned a half dozen lockstones because I was sure I had to go through it to progress the story. <laughs> this is also where I first learned about the cost of breaking equipment. Every invasion after the first, I took off all my gear and played naked hide and seek with my attacker, <laughs> saved me from paying for repairs, and kept me stupidly entertained. 
Uh, the Rock King looked less impressive than I imagined he would, but his charisma convinced me to join. Rap bro until I die. I think Andrew Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Rap bro for um, life. Whoop. <laughs> I like the idea of just hiding out naked somewhere. Yeah, like just somebody, yeah. you know, they just have to go through all your traps and they just find you hiding in the corner of like <laughs> just shuddering. Yeah. You don't know where I've been. Me. Just doing prostate over and over. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, uh, we didn't mention it, but one of the traps actually puts out a, a break puddle. Uh, it's, a, it's a puddle of acid. Yeah. 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 It's just like I think that's the one that, that has the Heineken can in it. Oh. That is the one that has the Heineken can in it. Oh, maybe they're so. trying to say something. Yeah, yeah. He's from. You can't all drink Sapporo. Yeah. <laughs> the, the cans are weird. Yeah, you can't get it everywhere. It's all here, pudding. Buddy. Plus, Sapporo's like it's two times the size of a normal can here. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's like getting beer. two beers. Yeah. What's well, wrong in, with in, that? In that case, yeah, let's all drink Sapporo. Yeah, let's do yeah. this. Fuck you, Heineken. Like, wait a second. This is a good thing. <laughs> We're back on your side, buddies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody for writing in yeah. um if you have uh comments again that's duckfeed.tv forward slash contact there's still plenty of time to get in your thoughts on the gutter and the black gulch yeah cheerful places yeah that just makes you think the rotten actually is like the uh the the, the great poo or whatever in design yeah. Yeah. if only he yeah. started singing opera yeah yeah he could be been... singing really under his breath before you go into his arena <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually what he's moaning when you stand yeah. outside the fog. It's actually, I'm a great mighty rotten. I will toss my undead at you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, thank you again for joining us, Dave. Yeah. Um, where can people find you on the internet? So you guys can find me on the interwebs on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K L E I N, or check out my YouTube channel where I do all. Souls related content, Kingsfield stuff, and soon to be uh, some new series I've been working on as well. And that's Dave Control Live. And yeah, check that out. Recommended. Yeah. I think it's the Bonfire Side Chat seal of approval. It says the winner that's, of the coveted 2014 Key Award. That's the yes, I get a key. <laughs> yep. <laughs> key to the podcast. It's made of chocolate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, that's not going to last very long. It's made of carob. Yeah. So you don't. Uh, <laughs> so, so you so don't we, we can't afford the chocolate <laughs> yeah. version of the key <laughs> um yeah. carob is gross mm. um what's worse carob or white chocolate ah, white the chocolate. answers are more yeah i think that's right yeah I just, I feel like uh, white chocolate i like when i'm in the mood but i have to be in the mood for it yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. the texture is really gross to me it, it coats everything it touches <laughs> yeah, it is the corrupting force <laughs> and it's more like i like one bite of white chocolate and then after that's too sweet for me yeah yeah yeah, I guess I guess that makes sense. Like a small, like a lint truffle, mm. white chocolate truffle or something. Like that. That's about all the white chocolate I need yeah. for a year. Yeah, or like one white chocolate Hershey kiss, and you're like, all right, that was enough. Yeah, that's it. this is this has been candy talk. <laughs> <laughs> Time for another episode of the Chocolate Bros. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can. Uh, where can people find us, Cole? People can find us. Uh, we have a very strong Facebook presence, uh, if I do say so ourselves. <laughs> no, it is uh, facebook.com slash bonfireside chat. Join the conversation. Uh, we have a website. This podcast is part of a network. It is the duckfeed.tv network of shows uh, where we have uh, such great shows as uh, Watch Out for Fireballs and Edric Suffering. Great in our own opinion. You can be mm-hmm. the judge of that if you would like. Um, and uh, yeah, just in general, uh, we are out there. Indeed. And you can also, if you want to uh, support us, you can go to patreon.com forward slash duckfeed TV mm-hmm. and throw us a couple bucks a month. It's yeah. a huge help. Mm-hmm. Um, it's We're going to do a live show with uh, Watch Out for Fireballs this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be funded. And, uh, you know, Bloodborne, we're going to have to buy PS4s at some point. Yeah. Not saying we're not holding you hostage. We're not mm-hmm. saying you have to buy us PS4s. Mm-hmm. However, we both had no intent to buy one of those, and now we have to get one. It's yeah. going to be expensive. So mm-hmm. a little bit helps. We're not looking to fund yeah. the entirety of a PS4 yeah. based on Patreon, but a little bit would help. Yeah. I kind uh, of been leaning towards Xbox One a little bit, and then this E3 happened, and I'm like, mmm. I, I like hate PS4. console exclusives. Yeah. It's so it's so bad for games as like it's a such media. such a bad force, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, mm-hmm. I think so, it's great for games because it makes it comp- competition. You think so? I, it's great for platforms. I think it's great. It's, it's not great for like it's great for uh, console developers, but I don't like it as like a what it does for the actual game as like a work of art. You know, yeah, I guess like what I, I guess the issue is when when people get so fanboy over their console because of specific games mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that's more what bugs me. But I feel like it helps induce that element of competition. It's then, probably. If, yeah, someone else is going to be like, well, now I have to make a good exclusive to compete with that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I guess like it is definitely good from like a business 
kind of perspective, yeah. but I don't I don't like it so much from an art perspective. Yeah. The, the the only way that I think it helps the actual game itself is if the designers can know the hardware that they're developing it for. Mm-hmm. And so as opposed to making compromises like let's get this thing to run on every system, they can, you know, cater it specifically to the system. A la a Last of Us or uh you know, Sony is really good at that. Or the uh, really good Dark Souls PC port. Yeah, yeah, that one yeah, was really yeah, good. Yeah, well, they, they but the the nice thing to, to to counter that point though, like the uh, when you put something on PC, like PC players will fix it. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, <laughs> yeah. it will just it will just work. Like and also will know things about it. Like guys like um, Illusory Wall and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like it's so much easier for him to to data mine something yeah. that is on a uh, on PC. So, so just yeah. is, so just yeah, sell yeah. this thing for money and rely on free labor to make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Or like Halkai Drake finding all those hidden files. Yeah, totally. Like I, I love yeah. that stuff, and it's just much harder to do mm-hmm. on a on a console game than it is on a, a open you know, yeah. on an all platform game. Mm-hmm. I love all that cut content. It's awesome. That stuff's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. We, we we've got a little something planned for later in the year. Yeah. Um, regards to that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, as as a little side note on that, if you uh you know don't have the resources to uh to donate to the Patreon, but you're still going to be buying stuff on Amazon, we do have that uh tip jar link it's stuffy.tv slash tip jar use the amazon link on that and uh we get a kickback and that is still a uh, a huge portion of where we get the money to run the show is through yeah, that that's, where, you'll get to, that's so. where you guys should get your ps for us yeah for bloodborne <laughs> and your copies of bloodborne <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, i think that's that's probably good uh thank you again dave yeah. for sticking chocolate around. Bros really out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of chocolate bros is on the way out this episode of chocolate bros is brought to you by latchkeykingdom.com <laughs> rain. that's our theme song i wasn't just making a meme chocolate rain. <laughs> that is our that's the theme song of the chocolate yeah. bros podcast <laughs> yep. uh, sunshine and lollipops and, um <laughs> yeah deleted scenes yeah If not, I mean, I have tons of memories of playing mm-hmm. co-op, yeah, even yeah. if uh, we ended up soloing it for doing as, a solo below for the, as, the episode. As do I. Like, uh, oh, man, they had it uh, at an arcade at my old roller rink. You know, you know yeah. the one that I owned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back before times got lean. What is the, what was the name of the, the Japanese version of that? Like uh, uh, Contra and arcades. Like whenever I see something from the soundtrack, it always yeah. says something different. Nicaragua attack. Yeah, um, <laughs> something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, McNamara, <laughs> McNamara's <laughs> legacy. Uh, McNamara's ambition. Yeah, uh, McNamara's ambition. <laughs> McNamara. <laughs> that's like, yeah. that, like that sounds almost like a uh, like like a rejected Dead Kennedys uh, <laughs> album. <laughs> McNamara. How long you guys been doing podcasting? Uh, separately since about 2007, I think we both, uh, started separate and then, uh, uh, Gary and I, uh, met up and started doing shows together in like, uh, 2011. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So a long time then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it adds I, I guess up. it is. In internet time, it is a very long time. No, it's like, I, I linked on one of my videos, my first ever video yeah. that I cut that was on YouTube and it was 2007. <laughs> And mm-hmm. someone commented, like, wow, this is, like, old school. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think it was that long ago. Well, I was, I was thinking about that. Uh, I'm, I'm going back. I'm listening to, uh, to You Look Nice today. It's one of the podcasts that got me into podcasting, um, or at least in the form that, I, that, that, I, that I'm in now. Um, and thinking, like, oh, this is, like, 2007. It's like, like, that's just a shade under a decade. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, we're, we're coming up on when that thing was 10 years ago. So I don't. I don't know if it's just the way that I live my life is conducive to losing large stretches of time, what with the drinking and the sadness. But <laughs> <laughs> like, it's Aww. like, oh, wow, that's actually pretty. That's a that, that's a stretch. We've been doing this. And yeah, there's, I think it's just getting older. You yeah, know, that's true. And we're, we're all blind. slowly rotting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As we march grimly towards death. <laughs> yeah. A momentary let us consider diversion. this. <laughs> Jeez. consider this series of games <laughs> i got uh, a, I, I got i got it not 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 to be grim sorry no but I got, I got an email from somebody at work who uh their their uh email signature like instead of having a little uh you know like jack handy quote at the bottom in italics it just said memento mori <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like okay cool i guess <laughs> no. oh well Mm. Well, so I'm like, man, being undead wouldn't be too bad for a little bit. Just a <laughs> I, little bit. I, 
in all serious, let's get serious here for a moment, guys. <laughs> In all seriousness, we any work. of those things, like being a zombie or being a ghost or being a vampire or anything like that, I would take it over being dead because we don't know what it's like. Like if you had if you had the choice and it's like, oh, you can die or I'm going to turn you into a vampire. Of course, I'm going to take vampire, even if, you know, all of the uh, the fiction makes it sound so tragic and tortured and romantic and, and wonderful. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Or same thing with being a zombie. Like if I knew I was going to die and we were in The Walking Dead, <laughs> I'll, I'll go for it. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. I think it just depends. It's just like because we don't know. So it's just like, well, I, if, if like all that after death is is nothingness, then yeah, I'll take anything else. I'll take I'll take the somethingness. Kind, kindle yeah. that flame. Kindle that flame. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll, you know, and yes, like I might end up like tormenting my my friends and stuff like that. But they you know they know better and they can shoot me right after. I just want to see what it's like. Yeah, it's Start the same with... way. Like right before I die, I want to try any freeze. I just want to <laughs> see what it's like. Like I. <laughs> You know, maybe uh, start great. my yeah. cycle again, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you know, just, just turn into a vampire so you can be a thinly veiled allegory for uh, for xenophobia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go back to your own country, Gary. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, so I, 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 yeah. I've got a question for you guys. I, I, is this a note for? Oh, I guess it's a different podcast note. Are there other podcast notes in this? set of notes yes so yeah, this okay. is just uh the functionally it is a it is a hidden blog on uh on just on the site so okay, like cool. you're yeah don't worry that tiny scroll by your bar you're seeing is that that, that is not everything we are going <laughs> yeah. to cover buckle up dave <laughs> <laughs> you fucked yeah. up you didn't know what you were signing yeah, up for a 48 hour <laughs> podcast stream that we're doing marathon for yeah. marathon <laughs> podcast for charity yeah. yep. Yep. oh the podcast you falls on the dance floor first gets disqualified <laughs> Awesome talks done slow, 2014. <laughs> the end. Hands on a hands on a hard edit. I don't know. Yeah, no, I was just like scrolling down. I didn't even notice the sidebar. I was just scrolling down. I'm like, oh, E3 <laughs> stuff. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'm ready to talk about press conferences if you want to. <laughs> no, that was that was from another show. Yeah, yeah. Maybe once I start playing the PC version of the game, I will finally stop having the loan. Excuse me. Whoops. Kind of worth like the lonely soul. Yeah, yeah, they kind of turned into a ghost there for a second. Uh, was yeah, really so, yep. Hello, lonely soul. <laughs> I'll retake that. I don't know. I've just been trying to figure out who the hell the four great ones that Vendra killed were. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's possible it could have been dragons and not like the four old ones were different mm -hmm. that he beat to get the power. Yeah. So this could lead to those. I hope. I hope that this leads to opening up that kind of plot hole yeah that that layer of the story that is just kind of immediately brushed over yeah, yeah. really we're, we're gonna forget about that that they said that mm -hmm. and fund other things <laughs> yeah hmm. cool cool yeah well, about a month about a month yeah i yeah. can't believe it's so soon I, mm -hmm. I was thinking like okay i got a couple months before the dlc and it's actually it's good for me because i'm starting to run out of lore videos to do mm-hmm so for me, for my channel, I'm just like, oh, good. There's more stuff to do. Yeah. Well, it's great for us because like anything we can do to extend the run of the show up till you know when Bloodborne is you know about to come out. Like I yeah. figure, best case scenario, we're looking at like you know end of fiscal end of this fiscal year for yeah. Bloodborne. You know, like probably maybe around the time the Dark Souls two came out, but more likely maybe sometime in the fall. So, like, what can we do to bridge that gap and keep this yeah. going is, is yeah. kind of the thing that is always at the front of my mind. And, and we can always go back and do, because I, I would like to do um, Deadly Tower mm -hmm. and everything, but those don't support, you know, months and months and months. Yeah. Like, we did our... Shadow our Tower. Right. Or Shadow Tower, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was like, uh, Deadly Tower. <laughs> we, are, we, that, we did that <laughs> for after suffering. We, you know, I just figured we'd, we'd take, a, take a little side trip. <laughs> um, that's what I meant, Shadow, Shadow Tower. Um, the... Uh, you know, because we did our, our seven episodes on Berserk and uh, Kingsfield. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we couldn't, we can't fill up that much time right. with that stuff. I mean, we could, but um, we, could you know, rather, we could stretch it. But yeah. yeah, I'd rather just kind of kindle Dark Souls 2 as long as we can and then do kind of a brief, you know, origin season two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 